Hey everyone, Windfall Drifter here with some exciting news. Can you guess? It's patch day, and I don't just mean pumpkin patch. October 5th, huge update for Core, including a brand new harvestable example project, a new framework that will allow you to really quickly set up a system that lets your players harvest, whether it's mining, chopping down trees, or even building things. Included in this update are a ton of new art assets, organic shapes that totally change how you look at kit bashing. I got a chance to get my hands on these new objects early and build an example project. It's live on core, it's open for editing, so you can go out, play it, download it yourself, pick it apart, and create something new. Today, we'll download and take a look at the Mouse Knight example project. All right, let's get started. Head over to the Create tab. You can glance at the New Project tab to see the new example project that just came out, Gatherables and Inventory. A really robust system, really user-friendly, very artist-friendly. I can't wait to look into it. To download the Mouse Knight project, though, we'll head over to Community Projects and search for Knight Mouse, or Mouse Knight. Uh, name it what you like, download it, and we can take a look at a few things that are in the project that you'll see right when you open it up. So as soon as you open the project, you can start taking a look around. I created a pretty small scene to showcase this new character using the new pumpkins, this new lantern that just came out, and of course, all the new shapes that make up the Mouse Knight costume. You'll see the static player equipment in the hierarchy, which will automatically apply this Mouse Knight costume to any player that joins the game. We can find it in the My Template section of the project content, drag it into the scene, scale it up, and take a look. I gotta tell you, I had so much fun creating this, and even though it, I spent so long making it, looking at it every time it really makes me smile. I'm so excited for all these new shapes, like the Clay Form 14. Uh, again, there's 15, total of 15 clay forms and a bunch of other egg shapes, uh, teardrop shapes. Uh, it just is so, so exciting um, as someone who always wanted to create more organic models in core, but was a little limited by some of the shapes. That limit is completely gone now. Uh, I did use a few uh, shapes like the lathe and the pepper uh, from, I think it was the previous patch. Um, so over the last couple patches, the number of organic shapes has gone up and it's been so much fun to model using those shapes. So let's go ahead and press play and test it out. All right, so once you press play, you can walk around uh, as a mouse <laughs> riding a bird and that's about all you can do in this example. Um, I really just wanted to make a really simple showcase of the models themselves, but also uh, I wanted to show how you could use an animated mesh as a player costume. So the player is hidden, and on spawn, a, a raptor animated mesh is applied to the root of the player. Uh, we hide the raptor, and we go through, and for each of the different joints, I've taken all of those new clay shapes, sculpted what I wanted, and I've used the mesh merging option to consolidate all of the geometry that's attached to each socket so that at runtime, 
core only sees one object attached to each of these joints. And so using the Raptor's animation stances, I have a simple script that tracks whether the player's moving, and if the player's not moving, it plays the Raptor's idle stance. If it is moving, it plays a walk stance. And that's about it. The Raptor animated mesh does most of the heavy lifting, and the end result is really pretty cool. In future videos, I really want to break down how I go about creating a costume that goes on an animated mesh like the Raptor. But that's all I wanted to say for today was I was really excited about the patch and all the new content. I'll definitely be making more videos. I know it's been a while, so stay tuned. <laughs>